Fun fact, if you take a shot every time I say the current West End production in this video, then it will feel like you are at Cabaret. Oh my god, hey, and willkommen back to my stage YouTube channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I'm just noticing how big this hat is. Has this hat always been this big? There is so much hat in my frame right now. Today, I am finally going to be telling you about the Paris production of Cabaret, which I travelled over to Paris to go and see a couple of weekends ago. Here is the programme. It doesn't give away too many details, but it is at the Lido de Paris, and it is a very different production of Cabaret to the one currently playing at the Kit Kat Club in the West End. So I'm going to be letting you know all about the differences between the current West End revival and the French production of Cabaret. I'm going to be letting you know whether I thought these worked. We're going to talk about the performances, all of those details coming up in today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you subscribe to my stage YouTube channel. I am an independent theatre critic and content creator based here in the UK, and I predominantly talk about shows that I've been to go and see. I talk about news and drama and gossip, and I make weekly vlogs traveling around to a bunch of different theatres. If that sounds like the kind of content that you would like to see more of on YouTube, make sure to check out some of my past videos and subscribe. Also, for exclusive stagey content, you can join as one of my YouTube members for just £2.99 a month, and the link to that is in the description of this video. Now, let's talk about Cabaret at the Lido de Paris. So the first thing we really have to talk about here is what sets this production aside from previous ones, because it actually has a much stronger resemblance to the original version of the show, prior to changes that were made for the film. Nowadays, most stagings of Cabaret that we see tend to resemble what the show has become, with the Don Mar Warehouse revival, with the 1987 Broadway revival before that, with the subsequent UK uh, Rufus Norris revival that then became the UK tour that went around a few times, and finally Rebecca Frecknell's amazing, blistering current West End revival that recently won the Olivier Award for Best Revival of a Musical here in the UK. The Paris production is very different on a number of fronts, and from what I can tell, it is mostly the pre-film version of the show and of the song list. Cabaret has had various different iterations, and so this production in Paris does not contain the songs maybe this time. That was added for the movie and has appeared in the show since. It does not have Mine Hair, but it does feature two songs that are generally no longer heard in productions of Cabaret. It features the Telephone Song, and it features Sitting Pretty, prior to Money Money. Is it called Money Money? Is it called Money Money Money? That sounds like ABBA. I need to fact check this. How many money is in Cabaret's money? Is it just money? Is it just a single money? Musical numbers, musical numbers, musical numbers. It is just a single money, just one money. There you go. I was half expecting this production to feature the song that occasionally appears for Cliff, Why Should I Wake Up, but it didn't. In any case, there is a little bit less of Sally Bowles in this production because she doesn't have the big maybe this time moment and she doesn't have mine hair. She does Don't Tell Mama and then she does the other scenes in the show. She is not in money either. It is still just the MC and the Kit Kat Club dancers. So she is very much sort of pushed further from the center of the plot. I would say the sensibility of this production is just quite different as well. With the current West End revival and with a lot of recent productions, Cabaret has tended towards a darker tone, and there are elements of that present in this, certainly, with the scenes with Fräulein Schneider and Herr Schulz, and with the growing tide of fascism, and with the Tomorrow Belongs to Me scenes and its reprise. You still feel the political undertones within those moments, but where Rebecca Frecknell's production does so well, and I don't want to compare them entirely, but where I think that one really succeeds is in the book scenes between Sally and Cliff. She has really motivated that dialogue in conjunction with the actors who give fantastic performances, but when Sally first appears in the current West End production uh, in Cliff's apartment and she is pleading with him to let her stay, you can feel the desperation. And in the Parisian production, she is attired quite uh, fancily. She doesn't have that sense of desperation. She seems like a wealthy girl who's flouncing around, who has other options that she could consider if this doesn't go her way. You don't get how vital it is that she's able to stay here. We don't feel that. 
In general, though I did like her performance, the way that Sally is directed in this show, Lizzie Connolly plays her almost flippantly. I was speaking to another critic recently who likened it to a Noel Coward character, and I now can't get that out of my mind. It's exactly the sensibility um, that she was really imbued with. And so when she does perform the title song Cabaret in this slightly odd dress that's long but mostly sheer with these panels covering her modesty. She does so in the now traditional, very aggressive way where she's screaming out the end of it, but because that really hasn't been foreshadowed by anything else and because she hasn't been dealing with this conflict and these challenges throughout the rest of the show, you don't know where that's come from. And all of a sudden her and Cliff are at each other's throats and it hasn't been preempted or foreshadowed by any characterization throughout the show. The rest of the differences between the Paris production and the current UK production are mostly down to the staging. So let's talk a little bit more about how this production is staged within the Lido de Paris. So this venue is a former cabaret venue. Fun fact, a perfect place for this show to be staged. I have been told uh, that after this production ends, they are going to renovate it slightly more so that it then can become a more traditional theatrical space because it's not what you would call a usual theater auditorium. It is entirely cabaret table seating. You have this stage that uh, wraps around the width of a back wall, has a little bit of depth in the middle entrances at the side and two little areas, one of which the band is tucked away in. And then this central sort of square playing space that comes forward like a thrust stage and the audience sit around three sides of that. In the middle of that thrust space, you have a whole hydraulic lift section that can go down. So these scenes can be dropped down. They can be lifted up slightly. So Cliff's apartment has a little bit of a lip to it because the stage raises up. Uh, but when the whole thing does drop down, they occasionally changed out some of the scenery on it so a whole house would be brought up. That was actually quite clever. I liked that they could do that. Otherwise, much like in the current West End revival, the scenery was relatively limited because if you put too much in the middle, you are going to be obscuring sight lines for the audience who are sat on each side. You had this tassely curtain at the back behind which you could see the dressing rooms of the Kit Kat Club. That's more than we see set-wise in the West End right now. So I enjoyed that. I liked that level of detail. There were two different sets that were put onto the hydraulic lift to come up. One of them was walls with different doorways that represented the interior corridors of Fräulein Schneider's rooms. So you had a door that Fräulein Kost was coming in and out of and another door that I believe was meant to be Fräulein Schneider's room, but Herr Schultz was also using it. There was some confusion as to who was living in that room. And then you had another set that was basically this house, but the walls and the door could be taken off of it and they were dismantled by the ensemble to just leave this empty house frame through which one of the fascist ensemble threw a brick representing the brick being thrown through the window of Herr Schultz's store. There's something to be said for a metaphor here about people in glass houses and throwing stones. I don't know if that was entirely deliberate, but it is certainly what it conjures. I wouldn't say that that was as effective as the simple yet striking way that uh, that moment is staged in the West End. I don't want to keep drawing comparison, but certainly that felt like one of the less powerful moments that ought to be a really striking part of the show because they just threw this brick and I think we had a sound effect, but you just see this thing flying through an empty window and then landing on the floor. It wasn't particularly potent. So I liked a lot of things about this production. I like the way that it's being staged within this venue. You get this really cool arrival. All of the cabaret seating around it is fantastic. I think it's still a really great way to see cabaret. Obviously a few people can at great expense have that experience at the Kit Kat Club currently in the West End, also known as the Playhouse Theater. But in this venue, it's entirely cabaret seating. I like the glitz of it. I like the glamour. I really like the choreography. I like the way a lot of the numbers are delivered, but in terms of the meaning and the integrity of the show, I don't know if it is presented quite as well as with the current London production or with any of the previous productions that I have seen. I think something about the message of it has been lost slightly in translation, and I would say the whole thing kind of positions style over substance. We get a lovely glitzy cabaret but it lacks a certain amount of depth. 
So on balance, because there is a lot of things to enjoy about it, and it's still really great material with some really good performances, it is a three-star review from me. Un, deux, trois. In terms of whether this production is comparably immersive, obviously the West End production has this immersive element. You go through this whole walkthrough prior to the show. The only thing that really happens in this one is that Samuel Buttery as the MC will engage with the audience during their opening dialogue. And at one point, some of the Kit Kat Club dancers run around the auditorium and put some uh, Prosecco bottles onto some tables that have balloons onto them, but then disappointingly they take them away again. So those are not free for you to drink as I momentarily thought they were. So that was briefly very exciting and then sad for me. One thing I will say that I did really enjoy was the choreography by Fabian Aloise. I think he's a tremendous choreographer. He's done some great work here. It is still familiar of Cabaret. It's still familiar of that Fosse style, which I think is inescapable. I think you'd be disappointed as an audience if you went to see a Cabaret or a Chicago and it had different choreography, non-replica choreography, that wasn't in some way familiar or indicative of the Fosse style. We just associate it with those particular Candor and Ebb musicals. And I believe Fabian Eloise has studied under Anne Ranking or knew Anne Ranking in uh, some way. I feel like I remember him talking about that online, but you can definitely see the connection to the Fosse style, but still presented in an interesting way. There's a few really great Kit Kat Club numbers that I really enjoy. He has slightly more playing space to work with than the current West End production. I will also say, deeply sensual and it is quite an erotic revival. I don't want to generalize, but I feel like the British are a little bit more repressed when it comes to sexuality and this being a French production of Cabaret, we have a little bit more nudity. I mean, it's not like frontal nudity. I have seen worse. The Rufus Norris production was showing you a lot more of the sailors that Fraulein Kost was cavorting with and the entire ensemble had a sort of starkly um, challenging to watch nudity moment at the end of the show that had a very different implication. Um, but you have a lot of very scantily clad Kit Kat Club dancers in this production, I will say, and some sort of fetishized moments, definitely more so than uh, the London one right now. It's risque, it's certainly risque. So let's talk about some of the performances. So Samuel Buttery plays the MC. This is a piece of casting I was really excited about. I had seen snippets of their performance in Taboo, and there is a similarity to the characterization here. There is a certain similarity visually in how they've been attired. They look not unlike Lee Bowery. I like the commanding nature of their performance when they come out. I like their presence, but critically, they have far less to do as the MC than in the current West End revival. Obviously, when this was first staged, it was built around Eddie Redmayne in this central role, and the MC was uplifted slightly more as a character, um, and just given a slightly heavier dramatic thrust, because the MC is minimally participatory in the narrative of the show. And for each revival, they have given the MC a slightly different sense of identity. You had the Sam Mendes version that revealed Alan Cummings' MC to be gay and Jewish and a victim of the Holocaust at the end of the show. Something similar happens at the end of Rufus Norris's production. In this one, it's never really clear who Samuel Buttery's MC is, and that isn't their fault. This really has more to do with the direction. They feel much less engaged with the show. They essentially only come on to spectate, and that's really the sense of what we get from their MC is that they are watching something that has nothing to do with them. That's particularly clear when we have uh, Tomorrow Belongs to Me for the first time. We hear this played, the MC is not singing this as the character does in the West End, but instead we're going back to how it is with previous versions of the show where the MC is listening to this being sung and watching footage happening that is being projected onto the back cloth. I believe Samuel Buttery at this point is sitting and smoking a cigarette and taking all of this in. Similarly, this is how the production ends with more footage being projected onto the back cloth, except this time it is not footage of Nazi era Germany. 
it is more up-to-date footage and it's comparing the rise of fascism in pre-Nazi Germany, pre-World War II Germany with other events currently taking place around the world, which is one of the more potent moments within this show. It's when it finally really has a narrative and it's actually saying something. If there had been more of that energy present throughout the rest of the show, that would have been great. But right at the end, they start to have this sense of a message, except that it should be clearer what these clips are. And if they used footage of the January 6th protests in the US, I think that would have been fantastic. I couldn't tell that they did necessarily. I couldn't place where all of the footage was. There was some riots, uh, a few different countries were represented, but I think it would have been more powerful if we knew what we were looking at, because the rise of fascism is a very real and very identifiable thing that is happening in various different places, in various European countries, as well as in the US. And I think it would have been incredibly bold if they had pointed a deliberate finger at certain individuals, at certain uh, political parties, at certain groups, at certain events. I think there is definitely a scope for them to have said something a lot more meaningful with this almost half-baked political idea. Now, circling back to Samuel Buttery's performance, they're a very capable MC. Like I said, they weren't given nearly as much to do. They put across the numbers that they're in very well, numbers like Sitting Pretty and Money. I don't feel that they necessarily gel all that well with the Kit Kat Club ensemble. They sort of feel like this being that is presiding over everything, but they do feel consistently very separate from everything else in the show. And I don't know if that works. I like their performance of I Don't Care Much, but that's really within Samuel Buttery's skill set very firmly to give them a song like that and to have them give a passionate rendition with this turbulent emotional undercurrent. It's what Samuel Buttery did fantastically in Taboo as Lee Bowery. The same thing is done very well here. So Lizzie Connolly as Sally Bowles. I've talked about this a little bit and I think Lizzie is fantastic. She gives a wonderful, really striking and shocking performance of the title song Cabaret. She's dressed confusingly and she hasn't really had enough happen to her character to justify the performance that she gives, but she gives it a fair amount of welly and she is throwing this microphone across the stage and she is screaming it out while still um, singing it quite nicely, actually. I just wish that there was more in her characterization to lead us up to that moment, to justify the rage, because it feels like a moment dramatically where she wants to be at a 10, but we haven't earned the climb up to the 10. And nothing is more frustrating than having a Sally express this angst and you don't know what it's about in relation to the events that are happening to her at that point in the show. We want some context for the grief in that performance because this is not necessarily what this song used to mean and it's not how it's always been performed, but it has become this bandwagon of giving this angsty and gritty delivery. And so this is another version of that uh, but I don't know where it's coming from. Oliver Dench is opposite her as Clifford Bradshaw, and he plays it sort of similarly thinly. Again, not necessarily his fault. He's characterized it as she has characterized as Sally Ball. It would seem that that is how they have been directed. But his performance as Cliff is just a little bit superficial. You know, we have these moments early on in the show where he is reading Mein Kampf. He seems conscious of the things that is happening. He has the line to Sally where he says one day he'll read her a newspaper and she'd be shocked to find out what's going on. But he doesn't seem too emotionally invested in all of it. He has quite a sudden pivot right at the end of the show and we don't see that growing within him throughout. He arrives as this reasonably charmed American. I would say his characterization is reasonably close to the one that we see in the film, and it just feels a little bit ineffectual. If he is meant to be our lens, our main narrator to the audience, because this is based off of I Am A Camera and Goodbye To Berlin, and he is the Christopher Isherwood insert writer protagonist, then it doesn't feel that he's really taking everything around him seriously enough. He feels just a little bit frivolous. Sally Ann Triplett is playing Fraulein Schneider, and she feels like the one who could most readily 
be brought into the West End production. She's giving a very similar characterization and she acts beautifully through those songs. I mean, she's phenomenal. I am loving how much work Sally Ann Triplett is getting at the moment. She is knocking all of these performances out of the park. She's another one that I loved in Taboo when I saw her performing in the anniversary concert. I loved her recently in Billy Elliot. I think she is remarkable. She was a great Fraulein Schneider. She played some heartbreaking moments with regret and fear and I just wish that she'd had a little bit more warmth and a little bit more youth brought out of her when she was falling in love. There was a palpable reluctance throughout her courtship with Herr Schultz and what I love about the London production is that they just become teenagers again even though they say how silly it is for them to be behaving that way. Um, you feel this youth brought out of them and this joy and you genuinely believe that they do have such a mutual fondness for each other. It sort of feels in the Paris production like she's humoring him and just participating with it slightly reluctantly and I think that you don't get as emotionally invested in their relationship when it's played that way and then it's not as heartbreaking when it all comes to pieces. So I would like for her to really be more in on the relationship and I believe um, it's her actual partner playing opposite her, so that ought to be really easy. Finally, I want to talk about Charlie Martin, who is playing Fraulein Cost. This is a lovely role if you can do something fun with it, and she definitely does. I really like that with Fraulein Cost in this production, when she sings the reprise of Tomorrow Belongs to Me, she removes a jacket, and we see that she is also wearing a Sfostica. It's not just that she is manipulating uh, Ernst Ludwig's um, fascist allegiance to uh, cause division between Fräulein Schneider and Herr Schultz. It's not just that she's souring the party because she's bitter and resentful and wants revenge on Fräulein Schneider for having uh, made fun of her. We see that she is similarly affiliated and so this goes some of the way towards explaining her earlier behavior in the show as well. I think it's a really interesting choice to have her so deliberately as a Nazi sympathizer in this production. And she foreshadows that very well. She plays the attempted seductions uh, by Fräulein Kost very well in the desperation. Again, she's another one who could quite easily transplant into the current West End production. I really enjoyed her in this role. So I do think people who just want this glitzy and classy night at the theatre that has a little bit of meaning to it would really enjoy this production of Cabaret. It's not devoid entirely of uh, deeper meaning, I just don't think it's as heavily articulated. I think a lot of people are coming to the current West End production of Cabaret and expecting this glitzy, champagne-y, all sparkles and singing and dancing evening, which it isn't. It really does hit you over the head with everything that's happening. And the Parisian production doesn't hit you over the head with all of the fascist undertones and the political undercurrents. It just presents them alongside. But I think it's probably easier to go and have a slightly more frivolous time at the Paris production. There is a lot to look at. There are visuals. It's stunning. It's this whole sort of seedy, Berlin scene and then you're just aware of something beginning to happen over there in the distance. It feels in the West End like fascism and the Nazis really arrive by the end of Cabaret. By the time we're at the end of that, Cliff has just got out of Berlin and they are here and it started and we're on this unstoppable carousel and it's all about to go down. And you very much feel that in the Sam Mendes and the Rufus Norris productions where they skip forwards to the impact of the Nazi regime in Berlin and the effect that that is going to have on the characters and the MC. In the Parisian production, we're a little bit more disconnected from that because we're seeing this montage of obviously years later, it doesn't feel particularly prescient. It feels like something that's happening in the background that we're kind of aware of, but it's not going to arrive while we're seeing this show. If you are a fan of Cabaret, as I am, I think it's one of the best book musicals ever written, I do think you should go and see this production because it's really interesting to see some of the old material, to see how it sort of varies the structure and the pace of the show and to see some of those songs and to hear some of those songs that haven't been in the show for a really long time. I feel like that's really exciting. Musical theatre nerds may enjoy this production for those reasons as well. And it's a really interesting space and it's a great way to see cabaret. And hey, if you can't afford cabaret table seating or you don't want to pay what the charges are for cabaret table seating here in the UK, you can get slightly cheaper cabaret seats at the Lido de Paris. 
But those have been my thoughts on the current Paris revival of Cabaret. If you have been lucky enough to see this production already, if you are from Paris or if you have travelled over, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stage YouTube channel for plenty more videos coming very soon, including lots more reviews. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>